Well, ladies and gentlemen, my name is Wayne Curry, and I'm happy to welcome you to a dash of curry dinner. I hope you enjoy the evening. Let me begin by saying thank you so much for coming out and supporting the Clemensport Legion, and also for supporting the Annapolis District Drama Group. The plays you see tonight I have a cast of all Annapolis District Drama Group members, and, they, and all of the plays were directed and produced by Simon Bonington. All of them are taken from this book, A Dash of Curry. Imagine that. The book... Where can we get it? Thank you for asking. The book, A Dash of Curry, is on sale at the back of the room. And five dollars from every book sold will go to the Clemensport Legion. Ooh. Before we allow you to eat, we'll start our first play. Now, it's a story of four people who meet in an elevator. Our daily lives will often take turns and places and situations where we share intimate knowledge with people we don't even know. Strangers. This play has a look at that. Sometimes, too much information is perfect. Ladies and gentlemen, going up. Oh, come on. Come on. We can we can put a man on the moon, but we can't get an elevator that arrives when we need it. Oh, come on! Hi. Going up? Yes, if this friggin' thing ever gets here. Come on! Hello, folks. Going up? Eventually. Is this elevator going up? Oh, for God's sake. What is wrong with you people? We are on the grounds floor of a 20-story office building. The only floors below us are, are parking garages. And we have obviously just arrived. Which direction did you think this elevator would be going? Jeez, lady, I am sorry. Any chance somebody got up on the wrong side of the bed this morning? Just saying. Oh, finally. I'm going to 10. What about the rest of you? 14, please and thank you. I'll get off at 8, please. Uh, 16, please. What the? Now what? Oh, for crying out loud! Oh my god, the elevator stopped! I, I think we're between floors. Oh, we're gonna be okay, right? Are we gonna be okay? This don't, has never happened before. Don't worry, sweetie. The moon is in the seventh house, and Jupiter is aligned with Mars. So only good things will happen. No problem. I don't know about Jupiter's alignment, but I do know that I'm going to be very late for a very important meeting if this thing doesn't soon start up again. Oh, this is just freaking great. Okay, calm down, calm down. This has nothing to do with stars being aligned or planets in houses. Every elevator is equipped with an emergency telephone so that maintenance can tell people what's going on. There's one right here. I'll give them a ring and find out what it is. It's probably just temporary. It's ringing. Hello, is this maintenance? Yes, yes, yeah, that's us. We appear to be in the northwest uh, corridor elevator, yes, and we appear to be stuck between the fourth and the fifth floors. Mm-hmm, yes, yes, I understand. Uh-huh, uh-huh. Oh, no, no, you're kidding, you're not. Oh, okay, all right, yes, I understand. Mm-hmm, okay, thanks very much. Well, what's the problem? Are they okay. gonna fix it? How long is it gonna take? I'm gonna get out of here. Oh, whether or not it is clear to you, the world is unfolding as it should. Therefore, be at peace and tranquility. Let me tell you what they told me. They but said- But I have to get upstairs because I have a really important me. I just gotta get out of here. Okay, 
it appears there's been an obvious electrical problem. There was a short in the elevator panel, which caused a small fire. What? Now, it damaged the backup circuits, but that is repairable. So, what they're going to do, they could try, they have lots of options, but none of them are easy. They could try squeezing us through the door and up to the fifth floor, but there's very little room. So what they're going to do is they're going to fix the panel, move the elevator up to the fifth floor when the power is restored. When the door is open, we simply get off. When the power reboots itself, when the door is shut, we get back on and we're on our way. The whole thing should take maybe an hour. An hour? Oh, oh, I am already late because of this slow friggin' elevator, but in an hour I'm going to be beyond late and I'm going to be hauled over the coals once again. Man! You must learn to relax, miss. Uh, missus? Uh, what's your name? Jen. Call me Jen. Oh, relax. Yeah, right. I have this meeting with my area manager, and he is a bit of an asshole. Every time I come here, he wants to know why my department isn't producing more. Look, I run the most efficient department in the company, and our numbers are way up this quarter. In fact, they have been up every quarter since I took over, and yet he continues to harangue me. Being late like this is just going to give him more ammo to get rid of me. He's been threatening to fire me ever since he took over. And I'm, I'm sorry, but whatever your name is, but Jupiter's alignment is not going to help right now. Moonglow is what I go by, sweetie. I know it sounds a bit artsy-fartsy, but I love it. I haven't used my real name in years. <laughs> and when people call me Moonglow, well, it just gives me a sort of calmness. In fact, I'm just on my way to see my astrologer on 14. I have some very important decisions to make, and, well, I need her advice. I never do anything without checking with her first. <laughs> so, since we're all going to be here for a while, we might as well get to know each other. Uh, uh, how about you? You got a name, sweetie? Yes. It's Sarah. I'm heading up to the travel agent on the 16th floor. Oh, my wife is a mess. So I thought, I'll book a trip to Nepal and I'll go hiking. Just to get away from it all, go hike in the mountains. Oh, this, this is very difficult for me. Oh, this little situation couldn't come at the worst time. Oh, I have claustrophobia. This is very difficult for me. Oh, sir, you spoke to them. Did they sound sincere? They weren't just shooting you a line of bullshit so that we wouldn't panic, were they? Oh, oh sir, I'm sorry. What was your name again? Um, people call me Hank. Now, my real name is Henry, but do you know what it's like when you're called Henry? Sooner or later, everyone's calling you Hank. I kind of like Hank, though. There's a bit of a tough guy sound to it, don't you think? <laughs> sure. <laughs> if you're so tough, how come you can't get us out of this jam? What are you doing here, anyway? I have an appointment on the eighth floor with my lawyer. I'm going to rewrite my will. Oh! I hope it's not too late to do that, Hank. <laughs> Sorry! Oh, it's warm in here, isn't it? Does anyone else find it warm in here? Oh, God, it is warm in here. Oh, it reminds me of that crowded parlor at my husband's funeral. Oh, I miss him. Oh, he always knew what to do. He took care of me, and since he died, I, just, I don't know what I'm doing from day to day. Oh, I just can't seem to keep it together. I think that's why I'm going hiking. I'm just going to get away from it all. I think I'm just running away. Well, we're all running away from something, aren't we? 
And you, Hank, aren't you a little young to be rewriting your will? What's that all about? Well, uh, thank you. Moon glow, is it? <laughs> Not that it's any of your business, but uh, I've had a bit of a falling out with my son. I don't approve of his lifestyle and he refuses to change it, so I'm just going to write him out of the will and leave everything to my daughter. Now my wife, God bless her soul, she would not approve, but alas, she's no longer alive to disagree, so there you have it. Well, if you have anything left over, maybe you could leave a little something to me because, oh, I'm pretty sure I'm going to be out of a job after this and I'm going to need all the financial help I could get. Well, you know, if you consult your stars, what are you, by the way, a, a Capricorn? Because that could really help you. Oh, for God's sake, would you let up with that stuff? If everything's so great and the stars are so wonderfully aligned, why are we stuck here? Why are people all over the earth killing each other? Why is climate change ruining the environment and causing terrible disasters in all corners of the planet? Why is there crime? Why is there evil? How come your stars can't fix all of that? Hey! Come on, lady, lighten up. People, please, all this bickering. It's not getting us anywhere. We need to stop this and just focus on getting through the next hour. Now, I'm sure maintenance is on top of this, and they're going to have us out of here in no time. The moon glow. Now, I know you put your faith in the planets and the stars, but I'm not convinced that's going to help us right now. I think what we need is a good electrician to get us out of here. You know, when we do get up, if you want to consult your astrologist, you go right ahead. I'm just not sure if she'd help us right now. And you know, hey, I don't know you, I don't know the situation with your son, but Hank, you're a young man. Obviously, your son is younger. <laughs> Surely there must be time, Hank, for you to talk it out. At least think about it. Why go to the lawyer now? Why not give it some time, Hank? And Jen, you know, if you really are the best, at what you do. Your boss isn't gonna fire you, Jen. He needs you. You tell him that the next time he blows his top at you. In fact, you know, you don't need his stress to become your stress. How about, why not just call him later? Why even go there now? He's probably gonna blow his top. We're late from the fire and all of this. Why not call him later? Tell him what happened to the elevator. Oh, look at you, Miss Confidence. <laughs> oh my, I'm impressed. Well, 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 the lady emerges. <laughs> well, this little situation taught me something. I miss my husband terribly, but I don't need him to survive. And I don't need to keep running away from my problems just need to face them and get on with it. Even if I do have claustrophobia. <laughs> yeah, and you know what? Maybe we don't need planets and stars to be aligned in certain ways. Things will just happen. <coughs> and maybe we are powerless to change them. We just need to live our life the way we want and do the best we can when we're thrown a curve. Yeah. Well, well, ladies, it certainly looks like you're rethinking your lifestyles and your attitudes to life. Hmm. Perhaps there's still time for me to rethink my lifestyle and possibly changing my attitude. Either my ton can change his attitude or maybe I should change mine. And you're right. As long as we figured out, that's what's important. I thank you. You know, Sarah, I really like what you said about my boss. If he doesn't like what I'm going to say, he can keep me or he can 
fire me. <laughs> I don't care. I have talent and experience, and I am the best at what I do. I'll survive. Hello? Yes? Yes? Right on. All fantastic. Thank you. Well? It's fixed. In a few oh. seconds, they're going to move the elevator up to the fifth floor. They said when the doors open, let them close behind us, press the up or the down button, and we're on our way. Oh, great. <laughs> Praise the Lord. I, I mean the stars. <laughs> Praise the stars. <laughs> a slice. I'm going back to my office and call my boss. Going down? That sounds like a good idea. The travel agent will have to wait. Down for me too. I could see to my will later, if I have to. I think I'll just go home. Call my son. Okay, down we go. I guess I can see my astrologer next week. Maybe. No need to waste a trip today. Oh, head this way. Hey, Sarah, aren't you coming? Well, I think I'm going to walk down, guys. <laughs> okay, suit yourself. And Sarah. Yeah? Thanks. Sure. don't have any misgivings about taking elevators now as a result of this play. <laughs> We're now going to serve up your starter course as we whet your appetite for another play coming up soon. Enjoy your starters. Thank you very much. Um, I hope you enjoyed that lovely starter, by the way. Our next play may enlighten us, or it may provide a, a nostalgic view of, uh, you know, as we say it, what things were like in our day. We do know that there are moments in our life when we just want to tell everyone what is wrong with the world. Most of the time, they don't want to listen to us. But there are ways to encourage people to listen to us. Ladies and gentlemen, I give you Get Lost. If that's a problem, I'm just going to move on. Oh, so now we're moving on, are we? Well, that just proves my point. Look, lady, I have a train to catch. Do you want my help or not? Well, pardon me, miss. I'm so busy. If, if, if you have a seat here, I'll, I'll tell you why I'm a little pissed off. And I'll also tell you what your problem is. My problem? Uh, my pro What makes you think that I have a problem? Oh, well, it looks like you're interested. Come on, have a seat. Not afraid of a little old lady who can't carry her own suitcase, are ya? It looks like I, I have a few minutes. Um, now, what's my problem? Oh, well, let's just get to know each other a bit first, shall we? I'm Jenny Berenson. I'm 72 years old, 
and I'm from Mississauga. How about you? My name's Georgina. All right, that's enough information. <laughs> now, here's your problem, Georgina. You need gratification in your life. <laughs> gratification? What, what do you mean? Well, for Christ's sakes, Georgina, let me finish. Gosh, you go on like a, like a dripping faucet, don't you? Uh, hey, no interrupting. It's my turn to talk. You see, people these days do everything in a selfish manner. You all want more money, bigger houses, shinier cars, flashier clothes, all so you can fit in more with the other self-gratifiers. And then, from time to time, you feel as if you have to do something to make you feel as though you're contributing to a better life, a better society, like helping an old woman with her suitcase, for instance. Look, that ju just one God, minute. Georgina, let me finish. <laughs> <laughs> you talk a lot. Ooh, ooh. You got more tongue than a Mountie's boot. <laughs> <laughs> oh, I know your type. You, you call your mother once a year. Or, or you visit your parents at Christmas and only Christmas. And then from time to time, you, you help an old person cross the street, even when they don't want to go. I mean, it's crazy what's happening in this world these days. You, you text each other uh, across the table and you don't even look up to see the expression on your faces. I saw two young folks talking to each other on their cell phones the other day, and they were walking down the street side by side. I mean, look, just because there other, you other go people. again trying to monopolize the conversation. <laughs> I don't understand why young people today all want to be the one in charge. You all want to be the center of attention, all trying to trump up your image. Oh shit, we know where that expression came from. That lying pig son of a bitch of a president is not the original racist, chauvinist, lying pig, egotistical maniac. He's simply a result of what's happening in the world today. And those Ford brothers are cut from the same cloth. Hey, you can't compare George me. Georgina! <laughs> Stop jumping in before I'm finished. It's just not polite. <laughs> now, where was I? See what you've done? You've made me lose my train of intelligent thought. <laughs> oh, 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 yeah, yeah. Forget about politics. It's simply a mirror image of what's happening in the world today, and it ain't good. Let's talk about what you uh, younger folk like for entertainment these days. If it doesn't splatter blood all over the screen, or fill the screen with naked bodies, or sometimes both, then it's animated furry creatures talking to each other, as if that's normal. I mean, by the time a kid goes to school, he thinks animals talk and shoving a stake through someone's heart is the way to solve the problems of the world. I mean, when I was a kid, I know what you're thinking. Here we go again with some old fart going on about how things were better and perfect in their day. Well, I wasn't. Well, maybe I was, but what the hell? It wasn't as if we didn't like sex and violence. It's simply we knew where it belonged, in the home. <laughs> sex was a thing between two married folks in the bedroom, and violence was what happened when your kid was acting up. A little slap on the ass or a tap on the back of the head was all you needed to get him to go back in line. I mean, don't get me wrong, we knew what was happening in the back seats of cars or behind the bleachers of the football field on a Saturday night. 
And we weren't so naive as to think there wasn't some violence in the world, or possibly in our own community, but we simply didn't incessantly encourage it in music, films, and books. Uh, Jenny, I have to object. Object? Object? Well, <laughs> that is an oddity for someone of your generation. <laughs> I call this the age of the lamb, because you all follow whatever the next trend is, like a bunch of baby lambs being herded into a pen. <laughs> this is a gluten free, calorie wise, low sugar, pharmaceutically fed, non fat, cholesterol free, wheat free, peanut deprived generation. I mean, Jesus Christ, how do you people survive? Every time I go to the grocery store to buy a loaf of bread, I have 47 different choices. The last loaf of bread I bought had so many seeds and grains in it, it, it fell apart when I put it in my toaster. I, I was afraid to put it in my mulch because I was fearful of what unholy grain sprouts and grasses would grow out of it. In the end, oh, it, it did make good filler for my bird feeder. <laughs> yeah. But when you do read the ingredient labels on food products today, you wonder if you should be putting them into your body. I mean, potassium chloride, sulfates, acetic acid, <laughs> ascorbic acid, lactic acid, just plain friggin' acid! <laughs> Monosodium guaiolate, yeah, 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 yeah. Monosodium guaiolate. Try saying that with a mouth full of acid. <laughs> it's a miracle we don't all have a case of the flaming assholes. <laughs> and then, then they have the nerve to list natural flavors as an ingredient. What is the natural flavor? Well, they never tell you that, but from the most, the taste of most processed foods, I can make a guess. Aren't you being a little... A little what? A little pissed off? A little frustrated? A little, oh my God, we're all gonna die? Well, uh, maybe I am, but I think I'm justified in thinking so. I mean, our values are completely upside down. We pay an athlete who works for six months of the year $40 million, while those who, who build the stadium or, 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 or operate the, 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 the electrical or, 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 or the cameras, they probably just make enough to sustain themselves. Actors who strip naked and kill each other on film for a hundred million a movie. Meanwhile, the guy that manages the theater that shows the movie probably has to have his wife go to work to be able to sustain their families. I mean, we complain about paying doctors high wages who save our lives, and then we have to go out and buy whatever the next song is by some up and coming guitar playing dude so he can survive on four million in royalties for some song he wrote while sitting on the shitter. <laughs> put more value in the work of the guy that gets up at 4 a.m. to deliver my paper than I do in the work of the politicians I read about in the paper that he delivers. Um, uh, uh, Jenny, um, I, I, I've got to get going now. <laughs> oh, I get it. When the going gets tough, the tough piss off. <laughs> oh, right, Georgina. Time you go about your life, just remember that there is a better way, and it's not tough. It's basic. Eat, sleep, work hard, love your family. Oh, oh, oh. <laughs> <laughs> And have a good shit 
every day. <laughs> Not for your health, you understand. <laughs> so you won't become too full of it. <laughs> All right, Georgina. Was real nice talking to you. I appreciate everything you had to say. You just gotta remember to slow down. Let someone else get a word in from time to time. Uh, nice to have, have met you. Uh, uh, stay happy. <laughs> That's all. <laughs> Suitcase? Bugger off! Excuse me? What, are you deaf? No, I'm not deaf. I just wasn't sure I heard you correctly. Well, I'm sorry. Let me say it again. Bugger off! Get lost! How's that? Did you get it that time? Look, lady, I'm just trying to be helpful. If that's a problem, I'll just move along. Well, now we're moving on, are we? Well, that just proves my point. <laughs> Look, I have a train to catch. Would you like my help or not? <laughs> Mister, I'm so busy. If if you have a seat here, I'll tell you why I'm oh, a little pissed off, and I'll also tell you what your problem is. My problem. My problem. What makes you think I have a problem? Okay, looks like you're interested. Come on, have a seat. So next time you're walking through the park and you see somebody sitting on a bench who's, who's itching to talk, you can either take advantage of the chance to take that advice or don't make eye contact. <laughs> the next play is the first play I ever wrote. And they say, write about what you know. Now at the time I'd been married for about 35 years and I thought I knew, perhaps misguidingly, misguidedly, a little about, about how to have a relationship. I'll let you be the judge of that. Ladies and gentlemen, the honeymoon. Wow, look at that sunset. Oh, I'm so glad we picked this spot for the honeymoon. It's so quiet, there's no distractions. I could spend a lot of time here. You're so right. It's so wonderful just to be here and listen to the waves washing. Oh, Glenn, I'm so happy. Here we are, finally married, and I'm Mrs. Fredrickson. <laughs> well, almost. Don't forget you chose to keep your last name as well, so technically you're Mrs. Hawthorne Fredrickson. Or would that be Mrs. Fredrickson Hawthorne? <laughs> I don't know, but it means that we'll be together for the rest of our lives. Oh, Glenn, I still can't believe it. <laughs> I just had a thought, Francine. If we have a daughter, and she chooses to marry someone from a family with a double last name as well, say something like, I don't know, uh, Brown Smithsonian? Now, if she chooses to keep her last name, would that make her Mrs. Hawthorne Fredrickson Brown Smithsonian? Come on, Glenn, I don't think it works like that. We've only been married for two days. I think it's a bit early to be considering who our future children may or may not marry, don't you? Oh, I know, I know. I'm just pulling your leg. Speaking of which, Francine, uh, last night was wonderful. Mm, I know. I don't think we slept very much. I didn't know it could be so wonderful. <laughs> oh, I did. And just what do you mean by that? How did you know it would be so great? What if 
qualified to think about particular no, things. No, no, I only meant it's always <laughs> wonderful. Uh, um, I, I meant it, I knew it would be, uh, it, it should be, uh, Oh, come on, Francine, you know what I meant. Sweetheart, I'm only kidding. Oh. <laughs> Whatever happened to your life before you met me, I know from now on, it's just you and I now, right? Of course. Well, how could you even ask that question? Well, Glenn, I'm just so happy, and I don't want any doubts. Oh, I know what you mean. I look at our friends, and there's an awful lot of breakups. I, I hope, no, I know we'll be together forever. I have no doubt. No doubt. Oh, great. Now we have to wait another two hours to check in. I told you we should have... have found another place for our second honeymoon. Oh, I know, dear, but I thought it would be nice to relive our first experience here. After all, it was the great time we've ever spent together. Yes, yes, I, I know, but... I've always wanted to spend some time in Bermuda, or take a Caribbean cruise, or go to Europe. You know you have to... Experience everything in life. Of course, dear, but just being here <laughs> really puts me in the mood, and you know, at our age, any time... We're in the mood is a good time to be alive. Well, I'm certainly with you on that, and I guess that's why I agreed to come back. I have to admit this place certainly has a certain charm. I guess that's why I booked it in the first place. Mm. Oh, yes, dear, you really impressed me when we arrived here on our wedding night. <laughs> I certainly don't recall sleeping much that night. <laughs> I didn't know at the time it could be so... Wonderful? Oh, I did. Uh, I mean... It's always wonderful. Yeah. <laughs> Don't worry, dear, I knew what you meant. <laughs> and that uh, gives me an idea. <clears throat> <laughs> oh, hello. <laughs> oh, we didn't know anyone was here. Sorry if we're we... disturbing you. Oh, no, not at all. We were just out for a walk and to enjoy the sunset. Uh, I'm Glenn, and this is my new bride, Francine. Glenn, I love the sound of that. We were just married two days ago, and we're on our honeymoon, and we love it here. Oh, that's so nice. Well, we're Jim and Frida, and we're celebrating our 25th wedding anniversary, and we spent our honeymoon here. I remember it like it was yesterday. Oh, that's great. What a fabulous way to spend your anniversary, especially after such a long time. <laughs> oh, I'm sorry. I, I didn't mean the way it sounded. It's just I think it's amazing to meet people who have remained married for so long. Nowadays, there seems to be more single moms and single dads and divorced people than mm. there are those remaining together. And you two are probably in the minority. Oh. Well, it might seem that way, but, you know, most of our friends are in very long-lasting relationships, and, and we don't feel that we're... In the minority. I keep telling people that Frida and I have had 15 happy years of marriage, and then... And then? <laughs> and then he says that we've been married for 25 years, <laughs> which, of course, implies that 10 of those years have been so-so. Well, he thinks it's funny. I have heard it so many times that I am starting to... Believe me? Well, I hope not. Well, if you believe that, you're either naive or not... Very smart. Mm. Come on, Jim. You know I don't like it when you say things like that. Oh, he's like that sometimes, you know? He knows what I like and don't like. And yet he ignores it. Yeah. I'm starting to feel yeah. like um, you're not part of the relationship. Mm. Oh, come on, Frida, give me a break. You know, I'm only joking around. I only do it to the get a rise out of me. Yes, I know. And it always works. Oh, anyway, we don't want to bore you or take up any of your time. A honeymoon is very precious, and you can never... Really relive it. 
Although we're certainly going to give it a try. <laughs> um, oh, wow, look at that. <gasps> Sunset. Oh, it is beautiful. Oh, if you think that's beautiful, you should see it on the other side of the trees. From there, you can see it as it reflects off the water. Breathtaking. So, uh, big fella, on the honeymoon, eh? <laughs> well, enjoy. It's all downhill from here. What? <laughs> no, no, just kidding. I'm sure you'll be very happy together. Oh, you're right. It is spectacular from this side. Oh, what a lovely way to start a honeymoon. I know, I'm so happy. I just hope that in 25 years we'll remain together like you two. Tell me, did you have any doubts when we first got married? I think everyone has doubts. That's normal. But when it's right, you know. From the very beginning, I mean, I knew the first time I saw her that Frida was the one. Well, I can't explain it. She just was. I know what you're saying, but um, you seem to have been arguing when you first got here, and again a few moments ago. Uh, is it always like that? Hey, buddy, you misunderstand. We don't argue, we discuss. We discuss the pros and cons of everything. Can you imagine being married to someone who always agreed with what you said? Now that would be boring. Besides, <laughs> look at her over there. She's more beautiful than the day I married her. I can't believe it. I am so lucky. Oh, we just seem to fit together. You know, sometimes I can't see where he ends and I begin. He's the extension of me, and I have him. That sounds a bit far-fetched. No, I know, but it's not like you hear it described sometimes, you know comfortable like an old shoe. It's, it's not like that at all. Because that would imply a relationship based on convenience. And it's more than that. It's, it's excitement. It's a newness every day. Oh, there are times when I wake up in the morning and... Just lay there and look at her. Well, I can't understand why she's with a clod like me. However, I'll never ask the question. So, what's the secret to a long-lasting marriage? Because I want to be with Francine forever, and I need to know how I can make that work. Hmm, secret, eh? The secret can be summed up in two words. Yes, dear. <laughs> no, just kidding. I, I don't think there really is a secret. It, if it's meant to last, then it will all come together. You'll never even think that it will end. And even on the days when you're both tired, or, or the bills have got you down, or the kids seem to have come from some alien world, there'll be moments when you'll stop and think about how fortunate you were. Frida and I are like one person. I know what he's thinking before he does. <laughs> oh. We don't always like the same things, but you know, that just adds a spice in life. The fact that we know what makes us different from each other, that we know what we like and what we don't like, well, it's just one of the things that brings us even closer. <laughs> you know, we plan our days without necessarily talking about it and, and normally come up with the same ideas. We pick out each other's clothes. <laughs> we order for each other in restaurants and... We finish each other's sentences. <laughs> I can't imagine doing anything significant in my life without her. And... I would never make a major decision without involving him first. Oh, look at him. He's more handsome now than the day I married him. <laughs> <laughs> I, I guess, guess we'll stay, stay together, together for, for a while, while longer. <laughs> hey, Frida, let's get back to the lodge and... Let these two lovebirds enjoy their honeymoon in peace. Yeah, I agree, Jim. Besides, I'm a little hungry. Let's... Get some dinner? Uh, oh, come on, Frida, I, I'd rather have a drink first. You know I like a drink. Before dinner, yes. 
course I know that. Good. I just don't agree. <laughs> I think if this is going to be a romantic honeymoon, that we should start with... A candlelit meal? Yes, it, I know, I know, but you know, a drink will help... My appetite? Yeah. Jim, this is my honeymoon too, and I think that you should think of what I want. Now, can we at least look at the menu first? Yes, dear. <laughs> what a lovely couple. It was so nice to meet them on our honeymoon while they were having their anniversary. I was just talking with Jim a moment ago, and you can see that... They're still in love after all these years? Isn't that great? I had a lovely chat with Frida as well, and... Mm. Oh, Glenn, I'm just so happy. I don't... Have any doubts about our relationship? I feel the same way. I hope in 25 years... This place is still here and... We can come back to celebrate? <sighs> Wouldn't that be something? Maybe we'll bump into a couple on their honeymoon. <laughs> <laughs> I, I guess, guess we'll, we'll stay, stay together, together for a while, while longer. longer. Glenn, hmm? I'm feeling a bit hungry. Do you think we can go grab a bite to eat before we head back to the room? Hmm. Yes, dear. <laughs> <laughs> It's all about looking at life as we mature, let's say. As most of us get older and we observe others who are in the sort of same, similar position or maybe a little bit further on than us, we realize that our priorities change as time goes by. And uh, good hearing, clear vision, and daily bowel movements <laughs> become more important than ever. The folks in this play have those priorities right. Ladies and gentlemen, enjoy Tuesday Night Bridge. chips. I could have sworn I left them on the table. Well, that's certainly where I found them, but we don't need to bring them out until we break in the game later. You know, you have to stop moving things around on me. It's very confusing, and I can never find things. For instance, every time I go to the washroom, the toilet paper is on the opposite side to where I left it. Martha, you know that I'm left-handed and I have to have the toilet paper on that side so I can... Okay, okay. I don't need to know any more than that. Anyway, Dorothy and Henry will be here soon for our regular Tuesday night bridge game, so let's get ready. There they are now. I'll get it. and make yourselves at home. Same seating as always. Hello, Henry! What? Hi, folks. Uh, nice to see you again. <laughs> How are the roads, Dorothy? Oh, I have no idea, dear. You have no idea? What do you mean you have no idea? I thought, I thought you were doing the driving. Oh, I do, dear, but I can't see a thing, so I have no idea what the road is like. <laughs> My goodness, Dorothy, if you can't see a thing, why don't you let Henry drive the car? What? What? 
Gracious, no. Henry can't hear a thing, so he'd be useless driving. No, it works quite well for us. I can't see, and he can't hear, so I drive, and Henry tells me what the road is like. And he tells me where the stop signs are, and he tells me when the light turns red or green, and he tells me how close I am to another car, and he tells me where to turn, and I tell him, to, well, I don't tell him anything because he can't hear me anyway. <laughs> okay, folks, let's get started. I don't want to run too late. None of us is a spring chicken, and I don't want Fred falling asleep in the dip again. It was in the middle of a slam last time he did it, and it was his bid to play. I could understand if he'd been the dummy hand at the time. Oh, come on now, sweetie, that only happened once. Besides, the, the bid was a no-brainer, and, and I had it made, awake or sleep. Especially with hear no evil and see no evil as our opponents. Also, I never did like that dip. Good then, dear. Shall we get started? Do we take our normal spots? Yes, of course. Have a seat. Can I get anyone some water? Fred? Dorothy? Henry? What? Uh, yes, dear. No, thank you, Dorothy. What do you mean, no thank you? You know water's good for you. Oh, I know, dear, but if I drink water, I'll be running to the loo all night, so no thanks. You know, you really should. You're supposed to drink 16 glasses of water a day for your health. Of course, Martha, but I'll pass this time. Now, are you sure there's really no bother? Oh, that's very nice, dear, but I'm, I'm fine, thanks. I really don't mind getting it. Honestly, Martha, <laughs> I'm fine, thank you. Okay. You know, Dorothy, around here it's almost impossible to say no to anything. Martha's always helping people who don't need it. I mean, I can't tell you, I can't tell you how many people she's helped across the street who didn't want to go. <laughs> All right, huh? There you go, Dorothy. Thank you, dear. I really needed this. <laughs> well, maybe can we get on with the game? Well, before we do, I have some good news to share. Are you hiding something from me, sweetie? Oh, come, dear, do tell. It's good news, great news, actually. After three long days of waiting, I have finally experienced a BM. <laughs> what? Uh, what? 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 A BM? A bowel movement. <laughs> I've been waiting three days and it finally happened. <laughs> what a relief. Well, you know, dear, I thought you had lost a little weight. <laughs> well, maybe. <laughs> Now we can play some cards and she won't be so uh, full of it. <laughs> now, Fred, don't you make fun of me. I'm sure you remember how happy you were the time the cloudiness in your urine cleared up. <laughs> and then you had your ears cleaned by Dr. Thompson and you described in great detail the color and texture of the wax he removed. And then you asked for the videotape to show all the neighbors after you had the anal scope. <laughs> all right, I'm very happy for you and your BM, but uh, now can we get on with the game? Hmm. I, I need to go to the washroom. Yeah. Okay. Okay. Just, oh dear, you don't have to announce it to the whole world. What? What? <laughs> go ahead, buddy. <laughs> go ahead. <laughs> While Henry's uh, doing his business, why don't we look at some pictures we just got back of the grandkids? They're so precious, and there aren't many pictures, maybe 30 or 40. <laughs> oh, I, I would love to, dear, but uh, I have to save my eyesight for driving. I'm afraid if I look at too many pictures, I won't be able to see the traffic lights when Henry points them out to me. <laughs> gee, I never knew that eyesight was expendable. You see, Martha, I keep telling you to let me sleep in longer. According to Dorothy, the longer my eyes are shut, the longer my sight will last. Now, I, I like that concept. Oh, come on, the two of you. All right, I'll leave the pictures in the drawer. Oh, here comes Henry so we can get started. <laughs> Uh, Henry, the front door is open and there's no one home. 
I'll just have a, a drink first. Uh, anyone else? A glass of wine? A beer? Oh, no thanks, dear, but I will munch on some of those chips. No, I'll stick with water, Fred. How about you, Henry? Drink? <laughs> <laughs> oh, I don't think he should, Fred. If he has a drink, he won't be able to see clearly, and I'll have a hard time to drive. We work as a team, so if we get caught by the stop by the police, we both have to have a breathalyzer. Oh, okay, no problem. I don't have to drive. And I don't know far to go from here to my bedroom later, so uh, I'll just have a short one. But that reminds me, last time you were here, I had one drink. I fell asleep on the couch watching TV. Martha didn't seem to notice at all, and she spent the whole night poking my pillow and telling it to stop snoring. <laughs> Look, I knew I shouldn't have had that water. I'm just going to run off to the bathroom. I won't be long. Now, Dorothy, don't run. It's not safe. We don't want you falling and breaking a hip. And not to mention that Martha will feel obliged the whole time to treat you as an invalid. <laughs> now, Fred, there's no need to be mean just because I like to help people in need. Helping people in need is fine. Helping them across the street when they don't want to come, that's criminal. That's twice tonight you've mentioned that, Fred, and you know it only happened once. I realized that lady did not want to cross the street that day, but I just thought she'd be happier on the side where the sun was shining. And how was I to know she was waiting for her daughter outside the bakery, and I certainly could not be expected to realize that she was a mute. Otherwise, I would have left her where she was. All in all, I thought she was quite ungrateful. <laughs> all right, I won't mention it again. But uh, here comes Dorothy, so finally we can get on with the game. Oh, Dorothy, look at your skirt. Oh, thank you for noticing, Martha. <laughs> I love it as well. I got it at Frenchie's for four dollars. The girl said it was pure wool. <laughs> Uh, Dorothy, I think she means you're a bit uh, tucked in at the back. Oh, you know, I am a little tuckered. We should what? think about going, Henry. What? What? Dorothy, your skirt. What? Oh, oh my goodness. Why didn't somebody tell me? We tried, Dorothy. We tried. Oh, my goodness. Oh, oh it is getting late, Henry. We should be going. Here's your hat. What's your hurry? <laughs> One no trump. <laughs> I'm, I'm sorry the game's over. We'll have to do it again next weekend. Huh. Thanks for coming, folks. Same time next week. Thank you, dear. It was for a lovely time. It's always great to get out for the evening. Well, you two be careful driving. Henry, please keep a sharp eye out for the traffic lights and stop signs. Bye. Bye. <laughs> Good night, all. It's been wonderful. Lots of fun. Henry and I love to play bridge, and we wouldn't miss it for the world. Bye. Bye. <laughs> good time behind there, I can tell you that. <laughs> Thank you, Cast. You have enlightened us, there's no doubt. Well, folks, we've fed you some good food, but we've also fed you some insights into life. I hope you've enjoyed the food in our, in our place. Ladies and gentlemen, can we start by giving a great round of applause to the amazing cooks in the kitchen and the drama group servers <laughs> who served our food. And can you also put together your hands for the drama group members who put on these plays for us. And la 
last but not least, our sound guy, our director, our producer, and our theatrical mentor, Simon Bonington. As a reminder, if you haven't purchased your book yet, $5 from every sale goes to the Clemensport Legion. Thank you once again for coming out to support the Legion and the Drama Group. I hope you enjoy the rest of your evening. Drive home safely.